Hi everyone! Welcome to a new series I would like to call, uh, thanks to some Twitter suggestions, Puzzle Pieces. Uh, I'm Miro, as always, and this is going to be a series that focuses primarily on puzzle games because I play a lot of them and I have a lot of them stay backlogged in my Steam library that I would like to get through. So you're going to come along with me on the struggle bus as I stumble and try to figure out numerous puzzles. Um, we're going to start with this game called Dark Side Detective and from what I understand you are a detective of the paranormal. Um, I've tried to avoid other people playing it, so I don't really know a whole lot, uh, but I'm very eager to get started, so let's jump right into the first episode of Puzzle Pieces. Twin Lakes Police System, Volume 13, Case Files. Malice in Wonderland, Tome Alone, and the rest are classified. What does this do? Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure what police corruption does. This is going nowhere. You should give up on this. You don't learn, do you? Ah, I think this gives a good indication as to the satire of this game. Let's, uh, let's jump right into Malice in Wonderland then, shall we? Case summary. The chief has sent me to the Jones residence. Dooley is there with further details. How to play. Detective McQueen closes cases by talking to characters and solving puzzles. Left click to examine items or talk to characters. Left click on inventory items for more information. Drag items to the scene to use. Drag items into each other to combine. Right click to skip dialogue. Hint, McQueen can sometimes wear items. Oh, interesting. Your progress is autosaved as you play. Please do not quit the game during a scene transition or your progress may be lost. I'm probably going to fuck that up. Officer Dooley. Whoa, I almost shot you there, Detective. You shouldn't be sneaking around like that. Detective McQueen, I uh, think is our main man. Dooley, you watched me drive up. Speechless. Tech McQueen, I had my siren on. You waved at me as I pulled in. I guess this place has me spooked out a little. So, what happened here? Chief Scully just called me up and told me to get here ASAP. No details. Seven year old kid, Alice, went missing a day ago. No sign of her leaving the house. Seems to be some kind of spooky crap. I mean, the kind of case you're into, detective. Great. Let's get started. Can we talk to him more? After now, detective, you know, whenever standing in this rain stops being fun for you. Can we go in the car? Our trusty squad car. I like to call it the Popomoto. Okay, so clicking on characters multiple times doesn't engage new dialogue for now, anyway. What is this? Uh, reserve. Sorry, learning the mechanics, guys. Officer Dooley, why is there a hobo dripping all over my carpet? Wow, okay, rude Roey Jones, uh, the man of the house, I'm guessing. Uh, that's Detective Francis McQueen, Mr. Jones. He's here to investigate. I see. Twin Lakes finest, eh? So, the place is called Twin Lakes, and from, uh, from what I understand, this game actually makes a lot of um, cracks at Twin Peaks, uh, a really bizarre show that I've actually never watched, and I know I should. I'll put it on my to-do list. Alright, so we've got Rude Mr. Jones, we've got an ashtray, we can go upstairs, go in the hallway. Let's look at this painting. Nice schooner? Haha, <laughs> you dummy. It's not a schooner, it's a sailboat. A schooner is a sailboat, Dooley. <laughs> oh, Dooley. I hope you don't smoke around your kid. Thankfully, detective, I'm rarely around my I'm I am rarely around my kid. That's really sad. So how can I help you, detective? All right, all right. Tell me about Alice, your daughter. 
I'll level with you, detective. I don't have many dealings with her. She has a limited conversation pool. <laughs> She's seven. Exactly. A tedious age. So, I leave that to the nanny. She's around here somewhere. Um, I picture all of this in, like, the the 50s aesthetic with the detective looking out of the blinds, like, all in black and white on a rainy day. That's this entire game for me right now. How come you didn't notice she was missing? I was out. He was at a strip club calling it. How wonderfully shady. Have you got an alibi? Where I was, was is none of your business, detective. My taxes pay your salary. They also pay for the cell and questioning room I'm going to have Dooley here take you to. Fine. Fine. Call this number. They'll vouch for me. I called it! Busty Bell's Booty Boutique. Classy stuff. Ah, Bell. Fond memories. Dooley! I mean... Where was he? Uh, Bell Shop? Uh, what? What is that? Received an item. Matches. I don't know how I got matches. Um, okay. I'm taking up enough for your time. Uh, nothing further to say, detective. Kindly leave me be. Okay, cool. Whoa, those folks must be millionaires. Uh, did we look at this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Alright, let's... Oh, does Dooley just follow me around like Watson? This reminds me of my own grandfather. Your grandfather was a clock? What? No, he had a clock. Shame. I thought I'd finally found out something interesting about you. What? I'm interesting. Whatever you say, detective. Dooley, you're rude. One of those crystals is worth more than I get paid in a year. Holy shit. We could take one. Eh. Uh. You, uh, you passed the corruption test. Well done, detective. God. <laughs> Dooley's amazing. I really like this character. All right, we're in a, we're in a closet with Dooley. He's, he's awfully close. Did you follow me into this closet? You may have, uh, needed backup? Oh my god, Dooley. Hmm, a black light bulb. Might as well take it. Now all we need is the disco ball, some white clothes, and fat beats. Then we've got ourselves a good night. Good night, we'll be finding this kid. So I take it I'm all like rules and get shit done and Dooley just wants to party and uh, have some fun times with Mrs. Bell, if it sounds like. Alright. Um, I think we're, we were in the living room, so let's over the study. Oh, locked. I wonder where I find a key. Okay, so we can't get in there. So let's go upstairs. A place this fancy deserves something nicer than plastic flowers. Okay. Plastic flowers are easier to take care of. What an odd place for a telephone. They must have run out of places to draw. I mean, put it. <laughs> Breaking the fourth wall a bit. Oh, we're going up to the attic paint thinner. The paint thinner fell when the shelf gave way. Not much left in it now. Oh, okay, we're taking it, though. A box marked Anne's Broken Dreams. Oh. These look heavy enough to knock somebody out cold. Just a bunch of forgotten memories. Hmm. May not be broken after all. Just a blown bulb. Oh, we're putting this black light... Black light bulb for black light things. Oh. I hope this doesn't reveal somebody's attic shame. Um, was that a cum joke? What the heck? Well, this doesn't look ominous at all. Cool, a uh, portal to the other side of the universe. Before we get into all that, let's uh, come in here. This could be a drawing of our suspect. Really? I'll put out an APB then. No, Dooley, don't do that. <laughs> So when we try to joke, Dooley misses the point. Looking at this, I doubt she's going to art school. Oh, that's rude. She's seven. I've never seen a horse with five legs before. You haven't? This is no time for art, detective. Blacklight. This looks useful. Oh, all right, we're gonna draw on that door. I don't have much use for a dozen pink socks. Why not? 
This is a lot of pink. I think I, I would have run off too. Let's talk to Teddy. Tell me where she is, bear. I'm only kidding. You don't know. You're only a bear. A stupid, know-nothing bear. Aw, Teddy might know some things. Don't be mean to Teddy. That looks like a tampon, not a marker. I'll be at an oddly colored tampon. All right, this must be the mother or the nanny. Ah, Ann Jones, so it's the mother. My baby, my baby is gone. Is there anything? You have to find her. Have you found her? Have you found my baby? Not yet, but I want to ask. You have to find her, please find my baby. Oh. All right, we're not getting anything out of her. Whoa. Find her. Weeps dramatically. Sobbing. All right, master bedroom. This must be the nanny then. Hard to believe this is the same woman we spoke to. The stress of all this has hit her hard. Alice and her mom look quite happy here. Seems impolite to go rifling around somebody's drawers uninvited. You rifled around the kids' drawers looking at her socks and shit. Alright. This nanny's beautiful. Ask her if she's single. You know, uh, you know, as part of the investigation. A waterbed. Very fancy. Looks like something has been kicked under here. No, it doesn't. <laughs> A peculiar pattern from the Occult for Dummies book. Oh, okay, good. Um, Alright, let's talk to the nanny. Tell me about Alice. She's spoiled and sticks her nose where it doesn't belong. This is Nanny McFiend. Oh, that's not an ominous name. But that's what she's... That's what's having a super rich parent... Jesus, let's try this again. But that's what having super rich parents will do to you, I guess. How long have you been working for the Jones? Joneses, detective. Even though it ends with an S, it's, you still pluralize it. Thanks, Dooley. So you're the nanny? The very innocent nanny, yes. Do you have any keys for the various rooms? I'm a nanny, not a maid. Right, but do you? Y yes. May I have the key to the study then? Sure, there's nothing incriminating in there anyway. Nice score. Alright, what can you tell me about the demonic doorway in the attic? Nothing. Not a thing. Uh, it's nothing to do with me, that's for sure. I was here the whole time. <laughs> God, could you be any more suspicious? I'm done with you for now. I'll get back to work and nothing else. Uh-huh, sure. All right, so now we can go into the study. Oh, drag this down there. And hey, presto, we're in. Roy Jones Esquire. It takes a certain type of person to have an oil painting of themselves. Yeah, and that's very true. An old oil lantern seems to have some oil left too. Oh, we're taking that, all right. This statue is ugly enough to be worth a lot of cash. The nice collection of books. The dust suggests they haven't been looked at in some time. A shame. His magazine collection. Jeez, this guy is obsessed with jugs. <laughs> Jugs Weekly, another lovely pair. It's a cover-up. You open the pages, it's actually boobs. Hey, there are two seats in this house. Don't be daft, Dooley. There are more. They're just off camera. Mm -hmm. Alright. Uh, living room. Up, back upstairs. Let's go back to the attic. Alright. Oh, I seem to have everything I need. Let's get down to some spooky hijinks and redraw those missing symbols. We're gonna open a portal to hell. Um, okay, so we have a black light marker. We need this one, there. We then need this one. And then we need, um, two dots, this one. Nailed it, that should be it. Great. Maybe now is a good time to stop doing, well, anything really. You guys don't want to go into the 
the dark side? Even I'm not foolish enough to go in there with no light. Oh, okay, so... These are from Busty Bell's Booty Boutique. This kid didn't win out on the father's stakes. So that's where we got the matches. It was his contact. Okay. I could probably light this thing, you know, just in case. Lit intern score. Okay, Dooley, let's do this. No offense, detective, but I'm not going anywhere near that creep house. Dooley, you followed me into the closet, bro, for backup, but you won't follow me into the place I actually need backup? Come on. I'll, uh, stand guard out here. Oh, well, found the kid. The labels say old milk circa 1880. Why would you store that? <laughs> Don't look in there, mister. That's where the three-eyed rats hide. Oh, God. This poor child. A box marked baby's first colt robes. <laughs> I shouldn't leave without Alice. All right, let's talk to her. Hello, mister. Hey, kiddo. Are you here to take me home? Yep. Good, I'm hungry. And the sounds from downstairs are scaring me. Yeah, let's get out of here. Oh, somebody's busting through. Dooley? Nope. Not so fast, detective. It's Nanny McFiend all along. Wasn't obvious at all. Where's Dooley? That idiot, I knocked him out. I can't have you snooping around here anymore, so I'm going to trap you here. Well, at least take the girl. Oh, I intend to. I'm her legal guardian, after all, and it's my job to look after her, especially if anything should happen to her parents. Say, for example, getting trapped in the dark side version of their bedroom? Oh man, she's got a whole scheme going. That that's what this is? An inheritance scheme? You have to admit, it's a fairly perfect crime. It, it is, actually. Even if I do, even if you do get rid of me, then what? Alice knows what you're up to. She's a smart kid. If she's so smart, she'll know to keep her mouth shut. Making threats. Once Dooley wakes up, you and your scheme will be done for. Hmm, good point. I'll just have to get you and drag him in here with you. Come on. Oh. Um, so I'm assuming this is where we use the paint thinner. Don't waste time trying to sweet talk your way out of this. Oh, dude, they just passed out. I'm scared, mister. It'll all be okay. Have a taste of your own medicine. No! Well, that's that problem solved. Solvent? Haha, ha. oh my god, that's a shit pun. Because paint thinner is a solvent. Come on, Alice. Let's pretend to... Or, <laughs> let's wake up Dooley so I can tell him my pun. Pretend it's the first time you've heard it, okay? Uh, okay, mister. So, the kid got into the nanny's stuff and accidentally used it to trap herself in that creepy attic. The dark side. But that's a surprisingly useful summary of things, yes. Shame the nanny was certifiable. She was a looker. Dooley, she was dabbing in the dark arts. Dabbling. Dabbling, not dabbing. That's a different teenage activity. With a plan to trap innocent people in a parallel world. Kidnap their kid and steal all their cash. I said it was a shame. Jeez. I wonder where the nanny got the occult books from anyway. That stuff is hard to find these days. It's called occult for dummy. A case for another day, I guess. First of all, I have to figure out what kind of paperwork covers this mess. Oh man, can you imagine the paperwork for his job? What kind of explanations? Case closed. Alright. So now we can do Tom alone. Can we... Ah, case summary. The chief has sent me to the Jones residence. Do leave there with further details. Edit. Their kid got lost in the dark side. Nanny to blame. Did the old switcheroony and got the kid home. I didn't hear her say it, but she probably called me a hero. <laughs> Alright. So. 
let's start Tom alone then. Dooley suggested a visit to the library. He must have seen the strange storm gathering over it. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Is that a face? Oh my god, I'm retarded. Okay, what's the case, Dooley? Fill me in. Case? No, I have some over to books to drop off back. Drop back? Who says drop back? So the purple swirling vortex thing above the building has nothing to do with why we're here. Aw, come on now, detective. You're hardly gonna arrest the weather. That sentence doesn't make sense to me. The things you'll try to do to justify this department. Ah, I see. I get it now. So, Dooley will look for Supernat- er, sorry, the Dark Side Detective will look for the supernatural in anything just so that he can say that he actually has a job. Got it. <laughs> Called out McQueen. Let's get this over with. They have plaque. This is a library. What a helpful plaque. Jesus Christ. These statues make me uncomfortable. They're not very welcoming. They should at least they should at least be reading a book or wearing glasses or something. Before this was a library, it was where the mayor kept her lion collection. What the fuck what kind of mayor has a lion collection? Oh, right, that clears things up. That clears that up, so. Okay, same thing on the other lion statue. How many cases do we need to solve, do you think, to get a car that doesn't leak in the rain? Aw. Oh. It keeps us fresh, you know, sharp even. We'll be done in a jiffy, detective. Alright, let's go. Fines? For being late? How many books? How, how are the books late? It's not like they have places to be. Oh my god, do we? Librarian Doris, aw. You're not charming your way out of this, Patrick. Rules are rules. Can we come to some kind of arrangement? Do you have any parking tickets you want to see go bye-bye? Oh my god, tickets for tickets. Dooley, are you trying to bribe your way out of a fine? Uh, no? Here's an arrangement for you. I'll drop your fines if you arrest that troublesome kid. Kid? The one who's responsible for the storm. And you know, the ghosts. Well, this is like straight up Ghostbusters now. Ghosts? What? Oh, that's all we get? Alright. Is this your to read pile? Oh, I've read all those. The desk is missing a leg, so I use them to balance out the computer. <laughs> oh my god. Ghetto library. A silent sign. Shh. <laughs> oh, we can go in the office? Okay. Looks like some of these coats have been here for years. We should go through their pockets. Y you know, for evidence. Dooley, you are a crooked cop. Oh, we did it and we got a button though. Bin. Roses are red, violets are blue. Your loaning rights are revoked due to the books overdue. That was a beautiful poem. I got this for Doris last time I had to get out of paying fees. I'm gonna have to put up the ante this- I'm gonna have to up the ante this time. How- why doesn't he just bring his books back on time, Dooley? Oh my god. Does that say guy light? That's hilarious. Oh! Did you notice? It is October. Spooky. Never know when I'll need to cut something in half. Or a lazy approximation of half. That's the way I do it. I never cut a straight line. The computer seems to be broken. It's not broken. It's hollow so they can store more books in it. The fuck? 
I really enjoy the access to secret areas this job gets us. Staff only? Not on our watch. Uh, is that? Okay, this. An old photocopier. I can't imagine this gets much use. Oh, it does. When you renew your card each year, Doris takes a photocopy of your butt for the records. <laughs> Everyone's butt? Just mine now that I think of it. That's the price of working out, I guess. Oh, so Dooley's like a ripped cop. Alright. So the, is this is this a calendar then of Dooley and, and then Doris? Is that what had happened in that picture? You can't quite tell what color his hair is under that hat. She got the hots for him? Um... From a certain angle, this looks like silly sideshow clown hair. <laughs> I think, oh. These burnouts seem like they can make for frustrating reading conditions. Oh my god, yes. I hate it when the light is flickering when you're trying to read. In a library, that's gotta be like death. Alright. What were you saying about ghosts? The place is haunted. You know, the usual stuff. The usual? Flickering lights, floating books, strange noises, eerie purple storms. It's chasing off the readers. And you say the kid is to blame? He's the only one here often enough. Suspiciously often, if you ask me. I'll look into it. Do, or else I'll call a pair of oddball priests and or a questionable Ghostbusting startup to come fix this. Oh my god, yes, Ghostbusters reference. Uh, also, I'm sorry, every old person I ever voice is gonna sound like a uh, old Italian mobster. So, that's all I got. You're welcome for my shit voice acting skills. Uh, what books did Dooley borrow? He had rules to rave to. Roswell's, Roswell's New Mexico, where the aliens really experiment on us, and the law, what is it, and what do we, why do we really need it? And do we really need it? Hey, what happened to the librarian reader privilege? Not a real thing, buddy. I can take it, I can take it you gave up on the law book. Oh, not enough pictures. <laughs> Julie. Julie's like the hot muscle head, but like, mentality of a 12 year old boy what's that you're reading guy light the heartbreaking tale of a girl who falls in love with a reverse vampire what the fuck's a reverse vampire of a what now my ex thoughts exactly McQueen a reverse vampire he can only come out during the day <laughs> sorry I just have to take this in I'm at the part where it's her prom night, and he promises to take her. But the clocks went forward, and now it's on at night. What happens if he goes out at night? He gets really sleepy. Sounds interesting. What? It sounds awful, detective. <laughs> what the fuck? Somebody please, out there in the world, I'm telling you now, write this book. Oops. I meant to click goodbye. Goodbye. If you need anything else, I'll be here. Unless I'm not. Thanks, helpful... What was her name? Uh, Doris. Doris, of course. Classic old lady name. Why would it be anything other than Doris? Alright. An old elevator? Where's the staircase? We have none. There was a fire, and ironically, the fire escape was the only thing that got destroyed. Good. Uh, mm, I think I'm happy that the horror button is missing. Mm -hmm. Reading room hobby, science, sci-fi, and fantasy children? Like, fantasy children? Or, like, fantasy and also the children's books? the reception. Um, I tell you what, we will ascend this elevator on the next episode of Puzzle Pieces and continue this uh, episode of, what was it called, Tome something? The Spooky Purple Cloud. That's what I'm going to call it. I hope you all enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. 
I will see you next week for another episode of Puzzle Pieces. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any pointers, feedback, comments, whatever, drop it down below. And yeah, I hope you all have a great night. Bye.